excuse me if I mispronounce uh, Hans's name here. Hans Olaf Gusta Alvain. So the G has those those O above the Gosta or G O S T A, and then there's those two little dots above the O. I'm not too sure how to pronounce that, but Mr. Alvain was a very awesome dude here. I'm gonna read a little bit about him. I'm gonna point out some things that I like about him a lot. Apparently, this is one hell of a scientist. Okay, one hell of a leader. He was a Swedish electrical engineer, plasma physicist, and winner of the 1970 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on magnetohydrodynamics. Oven made many contributions to plasma physics, including theories describing the behavior of aurora, the Van Allen radiation belts, the effect of magnetic storms on Earth's magnetic field, the terrestrial magnetosphere, and the dynamics of plasmas in the Milky Way galaxy. He was born on 30th of May, 1908, and he passed away April 2nd, 1995, at the age of 86 in Drustum, Sweden. In 1937, Alvain argued that if plasma pervaded the universe, it could then carry electric currents capable of generating a galactic magnetic field. After winning the Nobel Prize for his work in MHD, or magnetohydrodynamics, he emphasized that, in order to understand the phenomenon in a certain plasma region, it is necessary to map not only the magnetic, but also the electric field and the electrical currents. Space is filled with a network of currents which transfer energy and momentum over very large distances. The currents often pinch to filamentary or surface currents. The latter, meaning the surface currents, are likely, likely to give space as also interstellar and intergalactic space a cellular structure. I'm not too sure about intergalactic space and interstellar space a cellular structure, but I am sure that stars or emission nebula they're shining give off or have cellular structure in them and that's what I want to overview when I talk about the Sun's actual structure being that it's not a fusion reactor that's that's completely outdated obsolete stuff I'm gonna read this as well it's very cool <clears throat> Alvin's work was disputed for many years by the senior scientists in space physics, the British mathematician and geophysicist Sidney Chapman. Alvin's disagreements with Chapman stemmed in large part from trouble with the peer review system. Go figure. Alvin rarely benefited from the acceptance generally afforded senior scientists in scientific journals. He once submitted a paper on the theory of magnetic storms and auroras to the American journal terrestrial magnetism and atmospheric electricity, only to have his paper rejected on the ground that it did not agree with the theoretical calculations of conventional physics of the time. He was regarded as a person with unorthodox opinions in the field by many physicists, R.H. Stewart noting that, quote, he remained an embittered outsider, winning little respect from other scientists even after he received the Nobel Prize. Quote, and was often forced to publish his papers in obscure journals. Alvin recalled, quote, When I describe the plasma phenomenon, according to this formulism, most referees do not understand what I say and turn down my papers. With the referee system which rules U.S. science today, this means that my papers are rarely accepted by the leading U.S. journals. There you go. Here's some other stuff I really enjoy about. He had beef with the high-level radioactive waste management. I do too. You're burying radioactive waste in the ground. That's that's a recipe for disaster, okay? Just burying it and forgetting about it is bad juju. Let's see what else do we have here? Here's something really cool. Alvin also noted that astrophysical textbooks poorly represented known plasma phenomenon. He says here, 
a study of how a number of the most used textbooks in astrophys astrophysics treat important concepts such as double layers, critical velocity, pinch effects, and circus, circuits is made. It is found that students using these textbooks remain essentially ignorant of even the existence of these concepts. They don't even know these concepts exist. Despite the fact that some of them have been well known for half a century. For example, Double Layers by Langmuir in 1929 and The Pinch Effect by Bennett in 1934. The pinch effect is what burrs stars. Okay? Everybody should know that. It's very basic star science. We even see stars being pinched into or intergalactic uh, gas being pinched from the pinch effect. Birthing stars. It's the ant nebula. The boomerang nebula. Those are birthing stars. Okay. Anyways. Alvin reported that of the 17 of the most used textbooks on astrophysics, none mention the pitch effect. That's how stars are born, and they don't even mention it. It's wild, I know. Not mention, Nor mentioning critical ionization velocity, only two mention circuits, and three mention double layers. Okay. Alvin believed the problem with the Big Bang was that astrophysicists tried to extrapolate the origin of the universe from mathematical theories developed on the blackboard, rather than starting from known, observable phenomena. He also considers the Big Bang to be a scientific myth devised to explain creation. So do I, Mr. Alvin. We both agree on those terms. Alvin and colleagues proposed the Alvin Klein model as an alternative cosmology theory, cosmological theory to both Big Bang and steady state theory cosmologies. Now, I'm not proposing a whole universe cosmology because that's I consider that to be ridiculous. We don't even know how much is out there. The universe is infinite in both space and time. To propose a cosmology for all of it when we don't even know what's all out there is absolutely futile. My theory is only on stellar evolution. That's it. In other words, Alvain here was one hell of a dude. He worked on plasma physics, charged particle beams into planetary medium, magnetospheric physics, magnetohydrodynamics, solar phenomena such as solar wind and aurora science. And a lot of the research in space science includes Van Allen radiation belt theory, reduction of Earth's magnetic field during magnetic storms, formation of comet tails, formation of the solar system, dynamics of plasmas in the galaxy, and physical cosmology. Uh, another talk I want to give is I read three of Alvain's writings concerning the formation of the solar system and how he tried to explain the loss of angular momentum of the outer stars versus the inner star of the sun and there are huge problems and he said that somehow the, mag the, the momentum could be transferred via charged material but he's completely missing the point with that uh, the fact is that these objects they are not the same age at all they all were born mutually exclusive of each other and have taken up residence around each other along their evolution. Meaning the solar system, just because it's in the arrangement it is now, doesn't mean it was always like that. But a lot of Alvin's writings tried to encompass the entire solar system forming as is, without the idea of objects coming from somewhere else. And that's the main problem with the protoplanetary disk model. And that's the reason why star science is stuck in that regard. Is They don't realize that we have an adopted family here. But I'm just going to keep this more towards Alphane. Yeah, he was, a, he was a really, really unorthodox person. And I think we can learn a lot from this person uh, to my viewers I suggest studying a lot of his work and what he's working on and to try to adopt an unorthodox way of looking at the world as well. 
try to think outside the box with explaining a lot of this stuff. Don't look at mainstream explanations as being the only way of doing things. Okay. As, we sh as I've shown here, known physical phenomenon is really old physical phenomenon that was already understood, was completely ignored in textbooks. How is that even possible? It's not a conspiracy, people. Basic understanding of space physics is ignored in textbooks. It's incredible. But, uh, hopefully people can really get what that means. It means the textbook publishers have people on the editorial teams who purposely ignore it because they have their own ideas of how the universe works. So they put those inside the textbooks and those alone, and they ignore other people, regardless of other people have better explanations for these phenomena. It's not a conspiracy here. It, that actually happens to this day. It's happening still. And we have to pay attention to it. Uh, today is March 22nd, 2015. I think this talk really covers it.